going on YouTube? It's your man, Zach Common Sense, coming back at you again with another top 10. This one here is the Designer for Men Fall 2021. If you're new to the channel, we here at Uncommon Sense talk about all things fashion, fragrance, style, mental health, well-being, hygiene, everything you can think of and imagine to talk about being your best self. So stay tuned, because after the drop, we're gonna do what? We're gonna get into that thing. Every single day I'm gonna make something great That's my way Every single day I'm gonna make something great That's my, that's my way First up, we got an honorable mention Banana Republic's Dark Cherry and Amber. Smelling just like we we're gonna expect from the title. Amber, cherry, a little bit of that in the air. It's sweet, a little bit sour. It has a glade plug-in type of fragrance, a core that's appropriate for the fall season. It's just shy of making the top 10. And I had a hard time assembling this Avenger lineup. It had to make an honorable mention because I'm gonna be rocking this fragrance. Coming up to our number 10 spot, Boucheron's Jiper Chrome. This is the EDP version. You get loads of spices and cinnamon with this one. I prefer the EDP version because it's a bit smoother and creamier than the original. The EDT was a lot more sharper and screechy in my opinion. I had a tester version and I didn't enjoy that as much. So I went back and got the EDP. It's a lot more refined. This is a more mature scent and I will tell you fellas, if you're in your scent journey and you've not tried this one, I suggest it. It's probably one that you will need to take your time and grow with and let it grow with you. It's appropriate for fall. It kind of reminds me of Big Red Gum just a little bit. It's a sweater weather fragrance. Kind of reminds me of being in the cabins, red wood. You get lots of cinnamon. It's a comfort fragrance, and it's one of those fragrances that screams fall to me. I feel like it's one that you must experience to get the beauty of it. Coming up to our number nine spot, Givenchy Gentleman EDP. The Gentleman Gentleman moniker and naming convention can be so confusing, but this is Gentleman EDP. This is one that's very close and signature by Natalie Lorson. It's very close to Bentley for Men Intense scent-wise. And it's also very close to Dior Homme Intense. They share that iris leather type of accord. They are not the same, but they're similar in scent profile. Same thing with Valentino Warmo Intense, similar in that sweet, irisy kind of chocolatey accord but i love this fragrance and it's different enough so that you can have multiples of those types of fragrances in your fragrance arsenal without them being redundant depending on who you ask i have bentley for man intense for the simple fact of i'll wear this for fall and wear bentley for man intense for winter they have their respective places in my fragrance collection for different times of year. This one's a lot more applicable for fall. It's not as appropriate for winter because I don't think it will perform as well in the winter time. It'll perform better on me for fall because it has that sweet enveloping comfort with the kind of chocolatey patchouli nuances with the leather and the iris that will envelop me and perform well on my skin in the fall. That it won't do as well in the winter time. That's why I'll have the wrong influences that are in the Bentley for Men Intense. But this isn't about Bentley for Men Intense. This is about gentlemen, by Givenchy. EDP. Gotta cleanse the olfactory palette. Smelling a lot of fragrances. Gotta keep it clean. Coffee beans. Gotta cleanse the palette. Gotta cleanse the palette. Gotta cleanse the palette. Coming up to the number eight spot. We got Ancre Noir, Alex Fram. What more can be said? 
This fragrance took me by surprise. Shout out to Doc Rose because she gifted this fragrance to me. And I didn't expect this fragrance to be as good as it was. It is a masterpiece to me. Lalique really knows how to put a fragrance together. It is a masterpiece in bottle. They were glass makers. And look at that juice, it's so beautiful. Smoky, resinous, cypress, vetiver. A lot of people say it's inky. I don't find this one as inky. I love the vetiver, and this one actually captures that burning kind of vetiver, hay type of thing. That's why I feel this one's more appropriate for fall, and the Ancre Noir is more appropriate for winter, because that one doesn't have the burning essence. That one is a lot more deep and dark, which is, I feel, more appropriate for the winter time. And of course, this is an Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfums tend to perform a lot better on my skin, partially because I'm not a real hairy person. And I noticed that individuals who have a bit more body hair tend to have fragrances that perform better on them. Coming up to the number seven spot, Salvatore Ferragamo Womo. I'm late to this party. Recently just got this one a couple months ago and I've not done a review on it yet. I was holding off for that. I haven't been doing many reviews. I've been busy. I want to get these top tens out first. And one word I would use to describe this fragrance is decadent. Like coffee creamer almost. It smells like a dessert and I really feel like this fragrance is perfect for this time of year. Kind of like a Danish drizzled in maple syrup and just goodness. It smells amazing. Perfect for autumn. This is autumn in a bottle. And what I've also noticed is fragrances that are intended for fall tend to have this ambery honey type of color. Kind of like whiskey. You get sweet notes. I didn't want to jump on a hype train. I must say, this is a solid fragrance and I see why the Fragcom brothers are raving about this one and must attest. It's one of these fragrances that is probably not gonna last the longest on my skin. I may get five-ish hours out of it, but it'll be fine. It'll be perfect probably for a date night, something like that. It's one of the ones that will bring a lot of comfort to snuggle up close to. I wouldn't wear it to work, partially because it probably won't last the whole shift, but who cares? But, oh my God, I can barely get enough of it right now as I keep sniffing. And the price is going up on this one. I think I paid $30 for 1.7, and this is a baby bottle. But with a fragrance collection of about 145 bottles, I don't need anything more than this size, to be honest, because I'm gonna be hard pressed to cycle through and get through my collection to wear this enough. Come to think of it, that's kind of what coffee means. That's kind of what Salvatore Ferragamo smells like, kind of like a coffee creamer cake, coffee cake type of thing. Womo usually means him. Tibbet, number six is gonna be a, one of my favorite menswear designers. And designers, period. It's none other than Tom Ford, ombre leather. Tom Ford's ombre leather is gonna hold a special place for me because it's the fragrance I wore when I walked across stage in California when I graduated, my undergrad. One of the happiest days of my life. I worked so hard to get that completed. And that was a trying time for me. I had a lot going on. Ombre leather, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be rocking this one, man. Like, I, before in other videos, I said I wasn't sure if I was gonna get a full bottle of this. As you can see, I got me a full bottle. I also have La Yapron by Rosasi. They're similar, but this one's just a little different. This one is not as sweet on the back end. This one has jazz and sandbag. There's no fruity notes listed here, but this one smells so good on my skin. Had to full, bottle it, don't care. I don't give a fuck. And ombre leather is gonna be getting rocked. This one's probably better for fall, whereas Rosasi's Like Your Quan, which is a clone of Tuscan leather, is better for winter. This one starts off a bit more leathery slash Swedish and works its way a little bit more dry. Either way, you can't lose. And a lot of folks will say, this is a more cost-effective version of Tuscan leather. Either way, for me, it doesn't matter. I purposely would not purchase Tuscan leather from Tom Ford, the private blend. It's entirely too expensive. I got the La Yaquam. It serves the purpose to me. If I wanted that scent profile. This lasts on my skin. This performs. I sprayed some the other day. I smelled it one spray. I smelled it all day. I have no problems with this, and this is an Eau de Parfum concentration. 
Coming up to number five, we got Jean Paul Gaultier. Jean Paul Gaultier, Essence de Parfum. I ordered a sample of this one a long time ago and it was in the copper tin with the brass cap with the different configurations. And then I ordered this one from Canada and ended up getting the silver tin with the silver configuration. I have a decan of it where you can see the juice is burgundy. Now the juice is blue. I sprayed them, they smell very similar. Other than aesthetics, it really doesn't matter. Leather, cardamom, the typical Jean Gaultier DNA. Ugh, this one is sexy. Perfect for fall. Love the bottle too. My only complaint is the tin for this one is hard as hell to get in and out of. Like I literally have to work it, work it in and out to get it open. It is perfect for fall. I will definitely wear it on a date. I will wear it to work, maybe. It just depends on what I'm trying to give that day. If I'm not trying to impress anyone, not really. I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> You guys can find this one, I believe it's discontinued. So if you can get your hands on it, do so. I've seen folks selling it on eBay, a little skeptical about buying fragrances off of eBay. I just don't know what they got going on with eBay. I'm concerned about folks selling phony fragrances, etc. For the sake of authenticity, I'll just pay whatever price and call it a day. I may pay $60 for it, and this is for 2.5. You know what time it is? Gotta keep that palette clean. We've been smelling too many fragrances and we gotta keep our head in the game. You know what I mean? Coming up to number four spot, Azaro's. The most wanted. This one kind of smells like coffee too. Sweet. Toffee. Sexy. Vanilla. This one reminds me of a more well-rounded, better blended version of Halloween Man X. There's no dig at Halloween Man X. This one just takes some of that DNA, rounds it out a bit better, makes it sit up straight, and puts it in its best form. Nothing groundbreaking here. It's something similar and better clothes. I'm just gonna be honest. The thing that got me with this is, I love Ed Zaro's line. I love the bottom. That's the only real difference. And had I not got this on a decent buy, Macy's, y'all got me, because sent me some coupons and I had Macy's money. And I was a little risky, but I don't care. I ain't gonna fuck. Roll the dice. Price is nice. What's that got to do with the price of tea in China? I ain't gonna fuck. They don't give a fuck. You know, you know they perform? It sits a little closer to my skin, so I can afford to double up on the sprays on this one. It is a bit more mature in the fact that it is more refined. We got technically a fragrance that most may not really believe is a fall fragrance, but I don't care. Give a fuck. And don't. I don't care. Coming up to number three spot. Narcisa Rodriguez. Blue Noir. Ebony Wood. <sighs> Musk. Now, Cesar Rodriguez, to me, in my opinion, does musk well. And one of the best times to do musk is this season here because musk, in my opinion, in high heat can come up like body odor. Cooler temperatures is probably the best time to do musk because you don't have the competing elements of heat, humidity kind of coming down on you. You get cooler temperatures and you can do musk without the competing elements nipping at your heels. So sexy. So a blue fragrance has made it onto a fall list. Don't tell the authorities. You can tell authorities, it's my goddamn list. What it is right now? And again, this is why this is uncommon sense. You get a chance to experience fragrances that you may not see on typical top 10 lists. Experience them in different ways that you may not have thought about them. In the comments, let me know what your top 10 is gonna be. Let me know what you think about this top 10 and what you think about the fragrances that I'm putting you on to. What are you gonna be rocking with? Do you agree? Do you not agree? Let me know. Discuss amongst yourselves. Hit me up. Let's have a tent on it. Coming up to number two spot, we got Moschino Toy Boy. You kinda of probably had to know this is gonna make this top 10. This is one of my favorite fragrance houses. One of my favorite designers as well. Moschino. They have a freedom about them that I enjoy because I'm a free spirit. But Moschino 
has a playfulness. I'm playful too. This fragrance has a dark sensuality that I just really rock with. Love this atomizer as well, so. Just enjoy that and you things that are fun. You hate these bottles, you hate life, and you don't like fun. Have a little fun, goddammit. You may be asking. Well then, this is number two? What the hell knocked this down to number two? Don't spray. We'll get to that in a minute. But you gotta stay tuned. It had to be something. Right, right. We're gonna cleanse this whole palette before we get into the number one spot. Have you cleansed your palette? Cleanse your palette. Yeah. Have a little bit. Come on, come on. All right, all right. First and foremost, I wanna thank you for sticking in here with me to the number one spot. And second, I also wanna thank you for hanging with Uncommon Sense because you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, and that is the feat. I appreciate your love, your support, and I want you to know that does not go unnoticed. I love you from the bottom of my heart, top sides, and all the way around. And the number one spot goes to Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy Le Parfum. This is a new release for 2021. I've kind of lost my mind with the designer releases for 2021. This is the most involved I've been with new releases. I use the fade to black. No pun intended. It seems like a lot of the fragrances on this list have been draped in black. Not a bad thing, because you know, we draped in black. This fragrance caught me by surprise. It was a blind buy for me. Macy's has been getting a lot of money from me. <laughs> but it's all right, because I've been enjoying exploring new fragrances and getting in on the new releases. Let's get your love. In this has a cannabis note with some grapefruit. I was intrigued and I was like, Man, man. I love, I love no, no, no. Sweet and sour at the same time. That type of contrast is something that sparks my interest. And I feel like it's perfect for fall. Nobody else is really doing that right now. And that's why I was interested in it. I was like, ha, that is how you get my attention. Give me something new, give me something uncommon and bring it on home. And I was like, I want it, I need it and gotta have it. And I love this bottle. That's how you get me. Now, I will say draping in all black was eh. You could have did better with that. I feel like what they could have done was put the original bad boy in this bottle and then put this fragrance in the black and gold or put this in the black and silver, which is a newer release. I don't know, I'm not interested in that because the notes didn't look good. But this has a pepper in it as well. But it's drawing some comparison to Papa Robin's Phantom. They kind of smell like with that sweetness. But this one doesn't have just a nondescript smell good sweetness. That sweet with the sour, with the cannabis note and the grapefruit. I love how that's melange together and it gives you this floral bunda of sexy, sweet freshness with that little tart in there with that spiciness of the pepper. And then the smoky incense has my attention. And that's why I made the number one spot because it has that mystery and it has that alluring sexy that does not necessarily smell like anything else that I've smelled other than drawing that comparison to Phantom. All of that aside, this was uncommon enough for me to go ahead and pay full retail for it. And I had to have it. This is why that made the number one spot because it was so different and it smelled so good. So if you guys have not tried this, I suggest you give it a shot because it made the number one spot on this top 10. And you know, that's got to be saying something. You know, I don't play no game. So it's been your man, Uncommon Sense, and I thank you guys for spending time with me. I love you from the bottom of my heart, the top of the sides, all the way around. We're gonna lift it up and love on you underneath. And we out. Until next time. Love y'all. All right. Bye.